Hi, Chief. Mm -hmm. we're, we're on. Here we go. Good morning, good afternoon, and good evening to everyone out there in Facebook land. My name is Chief Master Sergeant Luis Reyes, and I am the Senior Enlisted Advisor for the Exchange. Today, we have a big time guest. But before we get to him, let me introduce my co-hosts, Leah Matthews and Julie Mitchell. Ladies, how are you doing today? I am ready for some football. How are you? <laughs> I'm, I'm ready too. I got to figure out how to do these chants. Go Pat, go. Is that how it is? Oh my gosh, Chief. <laughs> go Pat, go. <laughs> I, I'm going to tell Aaron. I can't say that. If I say that, I'm going to have to get divorced and I'll need somewhere to live. Oh my good. Yeah, she's, she's a pastor, Aaron. <laughs> hey, Judy, let's get this going. Let's properly introduce our guests. You got it, Chief. So some of you may have heard of today's guest. Maybe to get today's guest, maybe. Um, our friends at Bose helped us connect with him. He is a Super Bowl champion, a Super Bowl MVP, and a two time National Football League MVP. He holds a slew of NFL passing records, and we are very, very excited to have him with us today. Please welcome Green Bay Packers quarterback, Aaron Rodgers. Aaron, oh thanks God. so much for, <laughs> Chief, you're going to wear that out. I have to. Aaron, thanks so much for joining us. It's such an honor to have you on our Chief Chat show. And for everybody watching, thanks for joining too. Be sure to leave some love and your comments and questions for Aaron in the comments section. We'll be reading those out loud throughout the broadcast. And you should follow us so you'll know who's coming up next on Chief Chats. We have them scheduled out every Tuesday and every Thursday, even some some days we have two. And mm. if you want to enjoy this with your friends, now is a good time to go ahead and start your watch party. So let's get this going, Aaron. Thank you so much for joining us today. We are thrilled to have you with us. Can you tell us a little bit about where you're at right now and, and how you've been spending your time during this pandemic? Yeah, Chief, thanks so much for having me on here today. It's fun to, to be with uh, you all out in Facebook land. Um, I am on the West Coast. Uh, we, you know, obviously it's been a strange off season for us. Usually this time of year, we would have already gone through, you know, a couple months of off season workouts in Green Bay and been together as a team. This year, just like today, we, uh, you know, we've done all of our stuff on Zoom, actually. So we've done a virtual off-season workouts kind of on your own. You know, guys have had to find places to work out uh, during the pandemic. And, um, you know, obviously different states have had different rules uh, throughout this. So some guys have had the opportunity maybe to get started a little bit earlier or to have, um, you know, more, more space to work out. But I've been a little different in California, um, obviously, with the numbers that we've had. And, and obviously, different counties have different rules. So it's been a lot of uh, at-home workouts and at-home uh, Zoom meetings and, um, but it's nice to be back. I'm actually here in the gym here while it's still open. I know there's been some, uh, you know, some, uh, another wave of, uh, of cases going on, but, um, just trying to get my workouts in and enjoy my last, uh, you know, five, four weeks of off season. Should we actually start on time this year? Good. Good. Glad to hear that you're able to continue in your workouts and preparing that way. You're obviously best known for your incredible accomplishments on the field. You hold so many records and awards and have been part of a lot of incredible victories. Do you have a favorite moment from your career that you can share? Mm, that's a pretty easy one. We won the Super Bowl. Uh, unfortunately, it's been about nine and a half years now, but uh, that is always, you know, going to be a very special time. Uh, what we went through as a team that, that year, being a sixth seed in the playoffs, uh, you know, beating the Philadelphia Eagles uh, in Philly and then going to Atlanta in a, you know, really special game and beating them and then obviously beating our rivals uh, in Chicago, the Chicago Bears in a uh, uh, classic, ugly NFC North game, and then getting to the to the Super Bowl, and um, you know, in uh, in Dallas, playing a great Pittsburgh Steelers team, and and having to be a one score game, and coming out on top was was really special. And there's so many great moments from that from that journey, from uh, you know, the night before uh, delaying a team meeting, as we had a couple of our players. Uh, playing piano and guys just singing 
uh, you know, 90s uh, R&B songs before the biggest night, uh, the biggest day of our lives. Uh, we were just so relaxed, I think, in that moment. And this is, you know, such a great group of guys. And when you're when you're a part of a group like that, um, you, you can never take that away. Those moments, the achievements, the accomplishments, there's nothing like being a part of a, a team and especially a team that achieves uh, a lot of success. Fantastic. And I, what I really loved about your response was just hearing you talking about things off the field, like, you know, singing and, and hanging out ahead of the game and, and getting ready. I think that's, that's a nice little glimpse kind of behind the curtain. I like that. Um, we know that you've always been a big supporter of the military. You have family members who've served. Our heroes would love to hear some words of inspiration from you. What words can you share with us, Aaron? Well, my grandfather, uh, flew uh, in the Air Force in the Second World War and was actually a POW in Poland for nine months in, uh, you know, in, in, I think it was in 1943 or four. Um, and he served proudly and then taught um, for years after his service. And the military has always been a, a point of uh, pride in our family. I uh, was fortunate enough to go up to Alaska in 2008 and spend time at uh, Fort Wainwright and at the uh, Air Force Base uh, about 30 minutes from there. Okay. And my, you know, it's, uh, one of my favorite stories from that trip was, I actually told the story the other day, uh, in 2008, I had hair down to about here, you know, I had hair down to my shoulders. And what I realized on, uh, at, uh, on base was that when you're here, people think you're a special forces guy. So <laughs> everywhere I went uh, on the base, I was getting saluted by people. <laughs> and I didn't know what was going on for a while. And then uh, somebody told me they think you're special forces because everybody else here has the high and tight and you have that, the, you know, long hair. So I, I had some fun being saluted for a couple of days until people realized who I was. But I just have so much respect for the men and women in uniform and the job that you take up every single day. Um, there, there is, like I said, there's nothing like being part of a team and there's a special tight knit bond between your unit and, and uh, just like, uh, you know, on a football team, we have, you have so many parts of the, uh, of the squad that make up uh, the success. You have offense, defense, special teams, you have so many than a squadron or than a tune that to the overall success of the missions and, uh, the biggest thing that I always preach to our guys, our young guys is embracing your role because everybody has a really important role to play within that team. And the most important thing and the most successful uh, groups of, of folks and teams, I think are, are ones that have individuals that really truly understand their role, embrace it. And, and, uh, and then, you know, find a way to have success uh, in that role. And I just, you know, how much fun at Fort Wayne, right? Um, doing PT in the morning. Um, I got my ass kicked. I got my ass kicked by a, by a group of uh, folks up there. I believe they call themselves the Spartans. They were hand-to-hand uh, -hand combat uh, group of, uh, of folks up there who were uh, really tough and put me in my place. And I respect a lot of those, <laughs> those folks up there. And, then, and you know what's crazy? They were all getting ready to be deployed. Um, so there was that anxious energy um, that I think I'm sure goes along with that. But again, uh, because of, you know, my grandfather's service and, and my uncle's service, Nam, uh, I've always had a really special place in my heart for the military, a ton of respect for all the men and women and the job that they do in every branch. I, I used to have a roommate who was in the Coast Guard, and, and that's an important role that they play as well in policing the waters and, yep. and counterinsurgents and uh, counter narcotics and stuff. There's just such a, there's such a, a, a pride that I have and, and that so many of us have and respect for the job that, that you all do. And um, we're just really thankful for um, what you've chosen to do and what you choose to do every single day. Thank you for those words, Aaron. Um, Want to share that you're getting a lot of likes and loves on Facebook. People are watching from all around the world. Um, and, and leaving to comments from you, but I think for right now that chief has a little something up his sleeve with some comments, chief. 
So, so Aaron, that? I'll tell you the truth, right? It's I know nothing about sports. Zero, <laughs> zilch, nada. I, I would say, I'll tell you the story afterwards when we're off the air about how this came about when they told me some stuff, but I ain't gonna share it here in public, but I know nothing. So, <laughs> but this isn't lost on me, Aaron. Like, <laughs> like there's probably 100,000 people who wish they were me right now talking <laughs> to you. This is big, it's not lost on me. So I had to go and crowdsource some people, some super fans to kind of help me out, to show you, to show you their appreciation for you and how much they love you. And I asked a question. So, so Sarah, could you uh, turn your camera on? Dave, the whole crew out there, Kat, all of you, turn the camera on. Sarah, she's out of, um, this is Chief Master on Sarah Lopez. She's out of Fort Meade and she just wants to say hello and talk to you, Aaron. Go ahead, Sarah. Uh, hey, Aaron. Sarah. Hi, Sarah. So first off, thank you so much for doing this. Uh, Wisconsin loves you so much. And we're, you know, we're all over the world is really, fun as a military member to see some family and and we're all kind of connected watching your games it's been almost 20 years since I left the homeland uh, and my family doesn't seem to be impressed by you know making rank uh, training different uh, mission but they are so excited for me right now like you've made my whole career today <laughs> they're finally <laughs> proud of me <laughs> Stuff <laughs> in their eyes. Um, it's it's funny that you know you're you're worshipped um, in so many places, especially in my hometown. So um, thank you so much for being here. Uh, so I have it's Lindsay. She's from Hatley, and uh, I'm trying to get her to come visit me sometime. Decade. That's Lindsay. Okay, which one? Right in the middle. Okay. So she's a social worker. Sarah, so, we're uh, having some challenges hearing you, Sarah. Yeah, it's breaking up, Sarah. Okay. Can you hear me now. Yes. All right, so my sister, same age as me, she was adopted. Mm -hmm. oh, did we lose her? I think so, Chief. Yeah, we're gonna have to, hey, Sarah, we're gonna come back to you real quick while, maybe you can get to a better location with better signal. We're not, we're not hearing you. Okay. It's breaking up, give, give us, stay on, but we'll give us a minute. Hey, let me bring on uh, a Master Sergeant Matthew Zilich. And Master Sergeant uh, Carl Kister, you guys there? Where are you at? Hey, Chief. There you go. Four yours. <laughs> They're ready. <laughs> Huge fan. Uh, got a question. So my two favorite plays from your career are the Jeff Janis uh, touchdown versus uh, Cardinals and uh, Richard Rogers touchdown versus Detroit. Which play from your career is your yeah. favorite? Additionally, you ever walk to the sidelines and go like, wow, I just did that? <laughs> <laughs> I think I kind of did that in Arizona after, you know, we hit the fourth and 20 coming out of the end zone to Janice. And then, uh, then we hit the, you know, the, the basically the one man Hail Mary to him when I was rolling left. That was probably a more difficult uh, degree of difficulty throw and catch just because Jeff didn't get a chance to kind of get underneath it and jump up. Um, I've never made a better throw in my career than the throw to Richard. It just came off so perfect. You know, I got to really crow hop into that one. Um, and he kind of, he kind of owed me. Cause if you remember the previous play, I threw it to James Jones, he catches the back of the ball, then he laterals it to Richard. And for whatever reason, Richard decided to throw it back to me. I was trailing the play and he smashed and we got another chance for a play, but that was, a that was definitely a, one of my, probably my favorite moment was that. Was that Hail Mary to rich three at the time. Um, we were six and three at the time. Uh, so it wasn't like a playoff moment, like the throw to Greg Jennings on third and 10 coming out of, you know, backed up against Pitt in the Super Bowl uh, or the Hail Mary to uh, Rand kind of gets, I mean, those are big, big fun plays, but 
but there was really something special about that one to, to Richard on Thursday night. Uh, you know, we kind of been struggling for a few weeks. So I think we lost three in a row at that point. That's what I'm, and you know, just like this head that against Detroit and found a way to win. Um, that was a pretty special moment. But yeah, there have been a few moments where you come over and go, oh, that was pretty cool. Aaron, I have a question for you as well, if that's all right. Uh, so when your team's down and your team's morale is down, how as a leader do you overcome that and raise your team from being down and bring them to victory? Well, I think the, I think what I, what you learn is they're always watching. So you, you can't you can't always just be a a rah rah guy uh, when it's when it's bad or you know when they see you down in the dumps. You know I think the key is is emotionally you got to keep your yourself in check the entire time. And um, I know in order to perform well late in late in games, I really have to to think about uh, my breathing, my heart rate. Um, and then my expression, because uh, I think the way you're carrying yourself in those moments can either give confidence or diminish confidence. And for me, I've always just tried to stay very positive and very calm. And I think it's that uh, calm demeanor which allows my guys to um, – to find their own level of calm in the midst of those chaotic times where um, victory maybe doesn't seem likely or the, the path to victory is obviously going to be very difficult. Um, and it's about trying to be the same all the time with your guys and be consistent. Um, but that's a good question. I appreciate that. Where are you guys at right now? We're out of San Antonio right now. Nice. Awesome. Thanks for your service. Thank you. All right, next up, Cat Clark from Langley Air Force Base, Virginia. You're up, floor is yours, Cat. Hi, Aaron. Uh, huge, Hi, huge Kat. fan. I'm also from Wisconsin, um, Whitefish Bay, right outside of Milwaukee. Um, I have a leadership question for you too, and I wrote it down because I knew I was going to be so nervous I'd forget. Uh, I've been a Packer fan since I was, you know, this big. So. Um, being a leader, whether you're in the NFL in corporate America or in the military is all the same, right? Being a leader is a leader. Um, you have to earn the respect of your teammates in order to be an effective leader. But what do you think is the most important thing that you have to do to earn the respect of your teammates and be that leader in the locker room and on the field? I think it's consistency and uh, authenticity. I think, uh, especially the young guys are going to watch you every single day and see how you um, treat uh, the other players and how you interact with them. Uh, uh, what type of uh, habits do you have? Are you, um, you know, an on-time guy and a big note taker? Or are you, do you half-ass in the weight room or do you get after it? Uh, what's your practice habits like? Are you the last one on the field? Are you the first one on the field? Are you the vocal guy in the field or you do not give a shit you know I think they're they're always kind of watching uh everything that you do and they want to see or follow someone who is doing things the right way I think the best leaders that we've had over the years are often not the big rah-rah guys not the loudest guy in the room it's the Julius Peppers who just goes about his business the right way every single day he's always on time he's always prepared he works his butt off all the you know every day he's in there he's a good note taker and then when he does talk, it's meaningful from the heart, authentic, authentic words. During the 2010 season, uh, Charles Woodson uh, was one of our main leaders in the squad and, and not just the greatest player I've played with. I mean, talent wise, instinct wise, phenomenal player. Um, but he really understood what real leadership looks like. And it's not over the top stuff. It's not trying to be the guy. It's not, hey, the TV cameras on your or I'm mic'd up this game, so I'm going to say a lot this time. It's I'm going to do what feels right to me because guys can always read through the the forced uh, leadership, the forced conversation. We you know it's a joke sometimes when somebody's talking a lot before the game and never does. You kind of like oh, this guy's probably mic'd up, you know. <laughs> uh, so so what Charles did so well is he just he knew what to say when to say it, and he was always the same guy. You know, he was going to treat each person 
with respect, but he's going to hold guys accountable. And I, I learned a lot about leadership from him and, and uh, not only a great player uh, person, but a phenomenal leader for us during that time. And, and always knew how to get guys to listen to him and to, and to follow him. Cat, you're good, Cat. Anything else you want to say? Just go, Pack, go. Thanks, Aaron. Appreciate the answer. Thanks, Cat. Keep- next, up, next up, we have uh, Mashur Turnbow. Turnbow, she is a retired senior master sergeant, but she, she looks so young. Michelle, floor is yours. <laughs> Hi, what an honor. We are so excited. I'm Michelle. This is my cousin, Robin. We're both born and raised in Wisconsin. So, you know, we're born Packers fans and we just love you. Um, looking forward to seeing the it. season coming up. I hope we, yeah, I hope we have a season. Where, where are you guys from? Milwaukee. Nice. Awesome. Yes. So I have a question for you. Um, do you have a personal special routine or a superstition that you do um, before any big game? Oh, man. I think we're all superstitious from, you know, I think when you when you think about it, the first response, no, not really. But when you start to tell, like, what you do every single, like, game day, then you realize, oh, yeah, I'm kind of strange with that. Like, uh, you know, you wake up at the same time, you take a shower at the same time, get to the, you get to the locker room, and I always, like, take off my jersey, put it on my pads, take my pants down, put my pads in my pants, and then I read the game day, uh, the game day, what's it called, the uh, uh, book. Um, it's, it's the game day book like i read that for a little bit and then and then i always go make a smoothie and then i come back and when i'm and i listen to like the same playlist if we win i listen to the same ordered playlist uh until we have a loss and then when i put my when i put my uniform on i always put on my left shoe and then my right shoe so i think there's there's definitely an order to doing things that feels right. Um, and I think any superstition person knows that sometimes you can trip yourself out. If you did, if you mixed up the order to something, like say I did my right shoe first and my left shoe, then I think about that like in warm ups, like, dang, is that going to screw me up today? <laughs> I need to forget about it during the day. But, uh, but yeah, there's definitely, there's like, and there's always certain people, like pregame, I always got to make sure I say what's up to, a few people like one year this I, I turned around at one point and there was this this big dude who had this humongous red beard and he was always standing by the comm stations and so before the game one of the games I just pulled his beard and I went on through like four touchdowns and 40 yards so then every <laughs> game after that I had to make sure I found him and just gave his beard a little tug I haven't seen him in a while <laughs> But strangely enough, I'm not sure if they're still doing this, but at some point they were selling bobbleheads of this guy that you could <laughs> buy. He was like sideline beard guy because this, the fox caught me doing it one game. So, you know, we have little, there's always like I, right after the anthem, I used to be, I'd go, I went and, uh, and dapped up uh, Jordy. And then when Jordy left, it was Randall. And then now they're both gone. So it's Devante. <laughs> And then I go get a little sniffing salt from the trainer. And then I always try and like uh, do a little photo bomb of the captain's photo. And then, you know, I would pull the guy's beard and then we'd go play the game. So, so yeah, not very superstitious at all. <laughs> well, it works. It's been working. <laughs> all right, I'm going to go to the next. Uh, Darius Smith. Um, we're going to speed this up a little bit, guys, because I got to get back to uh, Sarah Lopez really quick. And then we got, I know we got about 15 more minutes left with him, so we got to go to some questions. But uh, Darius Smith, uh, I know you're not a big fan, but he wanted to do this for his one of his uh, uh, troops, Master Sean, Sean Schuyler. Where are you at? Come on up. Say what's up to Aaron. We're here. Hi, Aaron. Hey, guys. I'm a lifetime fan, uh, also from Wisconsin. Uh, the northern part of Wisconsin, Superior, Solon Springs in particular. It's always sunny in seven, and in- then 77 in Solon. So, uh, but I've been a huge fan my whole life. Uh, attended training camps for uh, as long as I can remember. 
every August. My kids now do that. They're actually on their way out to their grandparents to be able to go and hopefully see a training camp this year. But uh, my question for you is who is your greatest influence uh, on your leadership style on and off the field? And how do you uh, mentor people who are uh, your peers? Yeah, that's, that's a great question. You know, like I said earlier, Charles Woodson had a really big impact on me. Now that was my, my third year as a starter. Um, so there were many other people along the way who helped me with leadership. Uh, Joe Philbin, when I first got to the Packers, was a, was a great uh, supporter of mine. And we had a lot of long conversations. Tom Clements, who was a longtime quarterback coach for me, uh, always understood the quarterback position so well. And we would have a lot of discussions about uh, what I needed to do when my time did come and I was going to take over and what I wanted to be all about. Uh, before that, you know, I had some great coaches. Uh, I had a great coach in junior college named Craig Rigsby, who uh, taught me a lot about loving your teammates because he was a big teddy bear, but also he whipped some people into shape. Um, Jeff Tedford was my coach at Cal, and, and Coach Tedford was all, all about perfectionism. And I learned a lot about the importance of being an absolute master of your craft and how uh, guys wouldn't listen to you until they knew you were an expert of what you were doing. I think there's a lot of, a lot to be said for that. Um, but I think when it comes to mentoring, the most important thing, and I, I heard this saying recently, but I've always believed in this, is that there's a reason that the words listen and silent have the exact same letters. It's because I think in general, most people in life if you want to relate to them, just want to be heard and seen. You know, they want to be, they want to be seen as a respected person, a person of worth who has something of value to share, and they want to be heard. But in order to hear someone, you got to be silent. So as much as I feel like I have knowledge about football and life experiences and things, mistakes I've made along the way, it doesn't matter if I'm talking to a coach and we got some young coaches who are my quarterback coach is younger than me my head coach is three and a half years older than me it's one of those guys or a 21 year old rookie coming in trying to ask the old uh, vet with a little bit of gray in his beard the question the most important thing is to first listen and see them and make them feel like what they're saying is really important and uh the more you stop talking the more you learn about people and uh, and the more you learn about people the more you're able to see them and once you see them you know how to how to encourage them how to inspire them and also what they need to hear at, at that time so i've really always bought into that i finally have a, a saying that kind of i can use that makes the most sense and that's that you know the the more you listen in silence and listen to understand, not listen to respond, uh, the more you really can understand people. And when you understand people, you can motivate people, inspire people. And then as a leader, what you want most of all is to be respected and appreciated and, and followed, right? But that doesn't happen until people know, you know, how much you care about them. And the only way to do that is to listen to what they're, what they're saying and, and to be invested in their life. And, um, I learned that definitely over the years with some really good coaches and, and some good leaders I've got to play with. Awesome. I appreciate the comment. There's a lot of Green Bay fans in the 2-2, not as many as you'd think, but uh, Mass Sergeant James Osborne, who's at one of our places, he's a, a diehard Packers fan too. Um, can't wait to see what you do this year uh, as, a, as the quarterback of our team. You are far superior in this league one of the most accurate throwers I've ever seen in my life. And uh, I'm happy to have you lead our team. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Hey, thank you. Uh, Sarah sure. Lopez, you there? I am. Right, hey, yeah. she's back. There you go, she's real back. quick. We're going to speed it up a little bit because we got to ask a couple more questions and he's got about 12 more minutes. So go ahead, Sarah, the floor's yours. Thank you. So Aaron, a lot of what you're saying is really how we view leadership and training and how to be an expert at your craft all the skills that you're learning in football we, we we mirror the same 
concepts here in the military. So thank you for being such a great example for us to follow. I do have a question. Uh, so when you first came to the NFL, was it difficult for you to be not playing in very many games and waiting for your turn? Hell yeah. <laughs> <laughs> of course. I mean, uh, you know, when you're a starter for so long, you used to, you know, the game starts and I've already said my superstitious routine, you get out on the field and you play. Uh, it's a little different when not playing because I think in general, you want to feel like you're contributing and as a backup, it often doesn't feel like you're contributing. So what I had to do was kind of rework my mind and my attitude and figure out what could I do during the week that would make me feel like I'm actually making a difference on this team. And that turned into the preparation schedule that I have today where the film that I watch on Monday and Tuesday and the way I practice now is different because back then I was practicing against the, the first team defense, working on the scout team and trying to piss them off enough to get them to play a little bit harder in practice. And that's what I, what I say. It's something that's where the whole championship belt thing came from was I told my teammates on the scout team, a bunch of backups. I said, Hey, look, these guys aren't playing hard and we need to get some work in. So let's just taunt them as much as we can, maybe overdo the celebrations that might make them play a little bit harder. And actually it did. And then we got a little bit of work in. So I, I used to make uh, like three page presentations for Favre about what I was seeing on film and just some tips and reminders. And then worked really hard in, on the scout team. But it was, it was definitely difficult. And I think for me, it was the best thing. Falling in the draft, being a backup, kind of putting my ego aside and really jumping in trying to be a master of my craft uh, was the best thing to happen to me. Now you see more young players now are ready to play maybe a little bit earlier based on the way the college game is going. Um, and it's different for every player, but for me, it was the best thing to happen to me to be able to, to sit behind Brett for, for three years and get my body in good shape and check my ego and, and, uh, and really become a master of my craft. Thank you so much for having the patience. Uh yeah. We love it. So thank, thanks for playing. Thanks for being here. Yeah, thank you. Hey, thank you all for coming on. We're going to run through these questions really quick. Aaron, I think we got about maybe about nine more minutes left. I know you're a busy person, so we're going to breeze through these next questions, all right? Let's go. Here we go. Of course, obviously, in the military, we're focused on staying fit to fight. And for you as a top professional athlete, staying in fantastic shape is part of your job. Can you talk to us a bit about what you're doing workout wise, any tips for those who are trying to stay, stay in shape while not being able to go to the gym? Yeah, well, I'd, I'd tell you one thing that I, I do know is true now is that abs are made in the kitchen, not in the gym. So mm -hmm. as much as uh, having an important uh, exercise routine, um, it's, it's as important or more important to eat well. And what I've learned over the years as I've seen our own cafeteria change from uh, soda machines and milkshakes all the time, which I love the milkshake part um, to a humongous salad bar and uh, you know, healthy smoothie station is that it really does affect your performance. Uh, not just your physical performance, I think your cognitive performance as well. So just being smart about what you're eating um, and how understanding uh, how the ingredients affect uh, your uh, cognitive function, your physical function, your sleep patterns, uh, because recovery is just as important as the exertion of, uh, of energy during the day. So just really trying to, to be smarter about that has, has helped. Uh, as I get older, as far as the NFL goes, it's less Olympic lifting. Um, but the key has really been diet uh, when I look at my performance. And following up to that, Aaron, um, you know, you know that choices um, matter. So what's your approach? Do you strict to a strict diet or a nutritional philosophy or you, you look at each item as a choice? I think uh, everything in moderation. You know, I don't like being a, a total stickler for everything. I think it's important uh, to not uh, obsess over, over things like it isn't, you know, it's important to understand how diet affects your performance. Yeah. But, uh, I don't think any obsession is a good, is a good thing. So, um, I have a major sweet tooth, which is my easy out.
for the working more into the 80 20 or 85 15 type mm -hmm. of diet. So, you know, anytime I see, uh, see some sweets and I feel good about the work I put in that day or the eating pattern I've had for that week, you know, those are kind of my, my go-tos. I'm talking about Earn Oreos. It. I'm talking about blizzards. I'm talking about pies, <laughs> Yum. cupcakes. Yum. You know? Gosh, I'm so <laughs> hungry. <laughs> I just think it's important, you know, it's important not to, not to be obsessive about it, but, but just to understand what those things, how they affect your body and your performance. And Aaron, I love food. I love food too. We have that in common and the sweet tooth thing in common. So I'm going to keep on keeping on with my sweet tooth because you said it's okay. Um, <laughs> we're getting a lot of, you're getting a lot of great comments on Facebook from people who are watching all over the world. Just wanted to read a handful of them. David Bilsner says, Packer Backer, army dude, stationed in Germany here, watched the 15-1 season in Afghanistan. Love following your career, Aaron. You and I both started in the pros in 2005. You in the NFL and me in the army. That's awesome. I thought that was a really sweet comment. Um, somebody, I mean, best quarterback ever. A lot of people are really keying in on what you said about leadership and being a master of your craft that they, they're calling you a servant leader that servant leadership right there is what a lot of people are saying um hey julie read read uh read brandon crowder's note um chief i'm yeah. looking for it G, i'll read it real it. quick go ahead Aaron, brandon crowder says love the way you play the game and you're a great quarterback but i have one request stop beating up on my dallas cowboys <laughs> <laughs> Uh, well, we don't play him. We don't play him this year. So <laughs> unless we see him in the playoffs and they got, they got Mike down there. They got Mike McCarthy down there. So it should yes. be fun. Ronnie Russell says, Aaron, I'm a huge bears fan married to an even bigger Packers fan. She is currently deployed. I work for the exchange here at Travis air force base. Thank you for all the great memories. Even if I have been on the losing side. Definitely have lately. <laughs> Do you see this comment from Rebecca? She says, I just want Aaron Rodgers to say hi to me. Her name is Rebecca. Hi, Rebecca. Where's <laughs> Rebecca at? Uh-oh, there's the one question, Chief. You see it, Matthew? Let's just get this out the way, everyone. Aaron Rodgers, I had, I had this question like 5,000 times from people. I had to go on YouTube to go watch this play because I was like, what are they talking about? Did Des catch it? Can you tell the world? Did he catch it? Let's get this over with right here, right now. <laughs> Let him know, Aaron, please. He definitely tried to. <laughs> you have to understand that our headquarters are in Dallas. So... Mm. Yeah, these guys are like crazy. Yeah, <laughs> you know what? A lot, of, a lot of Cowboys fans usually mention that that play they forget that there was you know five minutes left in the game it wasn't a touchdown uh we still have time to move the ball they also forget the other fact that during that time the interpretation of the rule whether you like it or not was maintaining control to the ground you didn't have to reach the ball out when he reached the ball out the ball came out i don't care how many steps he took that was the interpretation of the rule I'll tell you the truth, Aaron, you know, talking to a lot of people, when I told them I was interviewing you, they were like, like the Aaron Rodgers. And I was like, I don't know, is there another Aaron Rodgers? Like Aaron Rodgers. And they're like, the football player. I was like, yeah, the football player. And they were like, are you serious? And a lot of them, right, they, they like different teams, you know, but, and even if they hated on the Packers, I'll tell you one thing they had. They had respect for you as a quarterback. They were like, oh, but Aaron Rodgers, top five Hall of Famer. Can't argue that. But man, did they like, you know, the, the Bears, the Cowboys. They were fans of those teams, but they had respect for you, 100% respect for you, which I, I found, I, I was kind of impressed. I was like, man, you know, while they still love their team, they have respect for another quarterback, which was, uh, I found impressive. And, and, it, and it shows how great you are on the field. It speaks volumes of how great you are on the field. But hey, Leah, you want to ask that one question there? Yep. One more. Um, so what everybody wants to know, of course, you know, you're a big hit with the cheese heads and some teams and sports leagues are talking about maybe playing without fans um, because of the pandemic. So what are your thoughts on that? I think it'd be really strange. Um, 
I mean, I understand the state of the country for sure, but uh, you know, there's something special about Lambeau Field. Obviously, we have the tradition, the history of uh, excellence in Green Bay. The the NFL Trophy for the Super Bowl winner is called the Vince Lombardi Trophy, and obviously, after our famed coach, we go to work in Green Bay every every day on Lombardi Avenue. Um, uh, you know, we play at Lambeau Field, named after Curly Lambeau, who started the team back in 1919 um you know there's a lot of great history uh in green bay and and it, it like somebody mentioned uh uh i think it was down the left uh, who's with darius uh, i think you mentioned your your family going to training camp like there's it's just different in green bay you know we have such a great you know, interaction with our fans you know we have thousands and thousands of fans at training camp um you know the the business is uh, and the and the houses for rent uh, on Lombardi and on Ridge Avenue and um, you know the community is really uh, tied to the team and so many uh, great you know mom and pop businesses or restaurants or bars right there are contingent on us having games you know and I know those people are hurting and and hopeful and like we all are that things can stabilize at some point um, as far as fans fans go that's what makes the experience so special around the league and it doesn't matter if you're playing in Lambeau Field or Soldier Field or or, or you're playing in uh, you know Seattle or Kansas incredible sometimes mean often mean fans you know the, the, that's what makes the experience so special is the advantage and the challenge of going to an opponent's team. And so I'm really hopeful we can find a way to, to have, uh, have fans, you know, in the stadiums, obviously there needs to be a lot of protocols in place and, and we'll feel good about the safety. Um, but to me, what makes the experience is not just the 11 on 11 and with the seven officials on the field, it's, fans in the stands scream and go, go pack go and sing and roll out the barrel and <laughs> having the Miller beer races froze I think I froze on you guys a little bit there but Chief I get I think we're getting some cues to wrap for no, Aaron we gotta, hey we gotta wrap it up but uh before we go, Aaron, thank you so much. I see them nice. Uh, thanks to our partners at Bose. I see you got them nice Bose headphones and 700s on your ears right there. They look real good. I wonder, I would ask what kind of music you listen to to get hyped up, but we're out of time. So that's going to be a question for the next time. But thanks to Bose for bringing Aaron Rodgers. Aaron, thank you so much for spending time with the military community today. Notice means a lot to us. Uh, uh, we wish you the best of luck in your upcoming season. Go Pat, go. Is that how you do it? Hey guys, unmute yourselves. Let's give them a go Pat, go. Unmute yourselves. Let's go, go All Pat, right, go. Hurry, hurry, hurry. Go, go Pat, Pat, go. 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 We go. Hey, we appreciate you, Aaron, and all you do, you know, and we appreciate you and so do our airmen, soldiers, sailors, Marines, Coasties, the military families, veterans, and retirees that are all out there watching. Thank you so much, Aaron. Floor is yours if you got any last words. No, I just say thank you, Chief. Thank you, everybody on here, all the Packer fans across the country watching this. We love you, and we know how important sports is uh, to bring people together, and we're all hopeful we can have a season. But uh, more than that, we are also thankful for what you do uh, and and the work that you guys do, whether you're working for the exchange on a military base or you're deployed or you're retired. Um, there's just a ton of love and appreciation from so many of us uh, in our sport, understanding how vital what you do is uh, to our country's freedom and safety and to the liberties that we're so thankful to have living here in America. So keep up the great work and I hope everybody's staying safe and healthy out there. And I really hope we can give you something to cheer about in the fall. Uh, my grandfather did and what you all do proud to be a part of this network chief thank you so much 
for this conversation. Leah, Julie, thank you so much. All the Packer fans who asked questions, I really appreciate it. And uh, I hope I can come back on sometime. Please do anytime. You're always welcome with us, Aaron. Thanks, Thank Aaron. You. Thank you. Thanks to your grandfather Thanks. for your service. Bye. Much love. Thank you so much, Aaron. Mad love. Bye.